really happy to be here. And of course, when um, Hester was inviting me to speak into this event and talk to you, I understood that this is because of this hyperbolic crochet, but this evening is not about me. It's about Sir Darcy Thompson, and it's about his book and the 100th anniversary of this book. And uh, well, so that I had to know, you know, like what to do. And Hester asked me, have you seen the book? And I said, yes, of course. But then I realized that I have seen only that small abridged version. So I went to the Cornell Library, and in Cornell Library, we have a reprint of the very first original, 1917. And from my, uh, uh, and from my notes on these sides, you can see that I can't tell you that I, you know, say I read every single word, but you can see I made the notes, and I will be quoting also from the Darcy Thompson. So I had to read this original one. I started to read the book, and this is like a first Oops, it um, doesn't show you everything, but I will read you. So uh, it's uh, Darcy Sarah Darcy Thompson writes, this book of mine has little of preface, for indeed it is all preface from the beginning to end. And indeed, this is the first book which introduced biologists' mathematics and Sir Darcy Thompson's idea was that biologists should be using mathematics, and it has, in, but it's amazing that the book in, uh, influenced so many other people too, and I'm not too, so, so for me, it was okay if he has influenced so many others, like how it connects really with my crocheted forms, and can I find also something in his book which connects to me? So uh, further he writes, I pretend to know mathematical skill but I have made what use I could of what tools I had. I have deal with simple cases and the mathematical methods which I have introduced are of the easiest and simplest kind. And indeed, this sentence really very much echoed to me uh, because that's exactly, even before I, uh, before I read Darcy Thompson's quote, I had written a book which you can in admission you can list through, and that was I was also thinking about like how to ex uh, ex um, explain non-mathematicians some mathematical ideas in that way that they would be like visually and then just like simply appealing and understandable. So I felt immediate connection with with his book, and that really really resonated. And uh, never, uh, even statist uh, statistician Carl Pearson said about Garcy, uh, about Garcy, uh, Darcy Thompson's uh, The Growth and the Form, I believe the day must come when the biologist will be, without being a mathematician, not hesitate to use mathematical analysis when he requires it. So the most known things mathematically when speaking about uh, the growth and form are uh, logarithmic spiral and transformations, and what well, mostly quoted also is this picture about the fish. And so, well, there is a, actually, I'm not going to talk about these ones, because there is an excellent talk on YouTube if you wish to um, learn about, Tom, uh, about these transformations and how they are explored in Thompson's book, and that is by a uh, great topologist, John Milner. So you can just like really find. For Darcy Thompson, serial transformations meant to find a way of translating the form of a curve into numbers and into the words. So well, what he has done, so like I was looking at, so and then there was well, when he says it's the weight ratio between the rates of growth in various directions by which we must account for the external forms of all organisms. And that was like a catch. I said, here it is. Here it is a very straight connection. That's a ratio. Well, when the ratios grow wrong, go wrong, then you can see in this presentation, sorry, I had a, diff I had a wrong, I guess, aspect ratio for my presentation because like, ugh. So, well, anyway. So what he, and uh, why there is this mouse and the brains? Because like it's in a gross and form, he, talks about this, like the size of brain of a mouse and a monkey and a human. And he mentions exponential growth. And exponential growth, that's exactly 
what I get. So that is exactly how my hyperbolic planes started. Uh, because as like there is an exponential growth, what is like very intrinsic in these forms. And then when I thought like about this exponential growth, I was thinking about this sometimes like a at least when I was a child in a math club in middle school, it was introduced, uh, that you are having rumors, and like if I know something, and like, and you know something, you know, like, and, and I said, well, just I'll tell you something, but you don't tell anybody else. And next day, each of us tell again somebody, and then again, and just, just, just one more, just one more. What happens? Very quickly, this just spreads. This is how rumors spread. Well, these days, you know, like after this financial crash, everybody knows Ponzi scheme. And when I had a calculus class, I said, well, you know, exponential growth, it's like a Ponzi scheme. Oh, yeah, everybody gets it. But when you crochet it in a way how it is here, if you look at this picture as crochet pattern, so then this is what you will get very quickly. It really, really grows very quickly. So, so then I had to change the ratio. And this is my first plane, which I did. It wasn't that crunchy. But so this is a ratio when it's 3 over 2. So what it means, I can describe by the formula the way how quickly uh, the number of stitches grow in this plane. It's 3, uh, three over 2 to the x. Uh, in crochet language, it means crochet 2 and add every third, add another one. Yeah, do the increase in every third. Well, this one was also not enough because I couldn't do the pictures and I really wanted to do the pictures. So then I tried to, to make this ratio closer to the one and that would be like the, the next one and then I can make, a, make a pictures. So these forms are very natural because you can see like a, these flowy forms in the nature. And so, well, they are seeing like very, very much, of course, in the seas. And if we talk about the corals, and late, late, later you saw that uh, you will be more talk about the corals. Not all corals have this negative curvature, which I will talk a, a little bit later, but some of them do. And this is like a coral which does. There are some other forms which are also can be described. And you see them and you can crochet them also. And that's every, every time crocheting, I'm using this exponential uh, growth to replicate them. So can we see these crenellated forms in Darcy Thompson's book? Yes, we can. Yes, so well, we can see these wavy, curvy, crenellated forms. And how the author of the growth in the form explains the differences between their appearance. And here comes again, the thing which I found was that's a curvature. And the curvature is what really, really differentiates. Um, you see there is on a page 216, that's the first one where he mentions the curvature and talks about the tension on the curved surface. Then further he talks about positive and negative curvature of the minimal surfaces and also about the wrinkling and pleated and patterns and obviously means negative curvature. And then again about like constant curvature. Why it is important? Because that's on two dimensional surfaces. You can define three different geometries. If we are having a zero curvature, or we say that everything is plane, like a floor on which we are standing, yeah, so there is zero curvature. So that's a plane, and that's that's the one which is very much known. If we are having a constant positive curvature, it will always close and we will get a sphere, and spheres with a different radii. And of course, there can be a negative curvature. Well, this is a negative curvature which we are seeing, yeah? so well, then we are like, for example, hyperbolic, but it's not constant. So in, in, in this picture, when it's constant, negative curvature in every, in every direction, so that's when we are getting hyperbolic and that's when we are getting hyperbolic plane. And well, never in, a, we don't really in, a, uh, in the nature seeing this negative curvature that it's constant. It's usually, it's changing and then it gets very, very much crenellated and changes. Uh, so well, I mentioned already these minimal surfaces and in a book, I found extensive discussion about the minimal surfaces. And one of the particularly interesting surfaces mentioned is catenoid. 
And these are like exactly, so this is, these are the pictures exactly from a book where Desi Thompson was mentioning catenoid. And that's a nice, uh, nice surface with a negative curvature. Uh, I was surprised that in this book is no mention um, about the minimal surface, which is closely connected with a catenoid, and that would be a helicoid, because they both sort of like morph into each other. I have a like a simple, simply uh, computerized. Uh, a computerized one. I managed to crochet actually this, and we were discussing with David, should I take? But it needs some some metal in it, and I was afraid that TSA in so in the baggage wouldn't be happy having those those things in my baggage. They actually checked my luggage. Usually, they are always super, uh, very suspicious about hyperbolic planes. When I I think they are thinking that those are math instru instruction weapons. Or, so it's um, yeah. It's, I, I, I had once uh, also like a workshop to show at these you know the, where they are checking your luggage. I had to show what to do with them. So well and um, well. So I didn't find this even I, like I had a feeling that uh, Sir Darcy Thompson had a good background in like a differential geometry and that would be like a main main thing we talk about in differential geometry. But then I had to remember that um, even the DNA was first isolated in 1869. Its molecular structure of double helix was identified only in 1953, and that is five years after Sir Darcy Thompson's death, uh, after he died. Uh, so the other thing which I found in, in this book, and that surprised me, is that there is a lot of talk about the geodesics. And then what are the geodesics? Geodesics are, well, if we are talking about straight lines on a plane, then when we are having a curved surfaces, we are no more talking about straight lines of them, but then we are talking, uh, then we are calling them geodesics. And so when, essentially when I was going to, when I was crocheting these hyperbolic planes, this is one of the pictures which I really wanted to make. That was my purpose to crocheting. Because the story is that when I was an undergraduate and I was studying hyperbolic geometry, I couldn't, I couldn't so okay, yeah, I learned that in hyperbolic geometry you can have a point outside the line and then when you are having uh, intersecting lines, so they can intersect mutually, but they will be all parallel to this one given line. But somehow I couldn't like really really, you know, deeply understand that. What does it mean? And when I was asking instructors, she got very angry at me and she said, you just have to imagine. Well, how can I imagine something that I don't know what to imagine? And so also I needed this picture. So then I crocheted it. And again, I can show you like, I have a feelings here. So you can experience like in, in a tactile, tactile way. So that is like, I, I purely con constructed that one for a, for a teaching and experiencing, and then finding geodesics, and quite a bit in, in Darcy Thompson's book, like chapter 10 is all, like chapter 10 in, in the section A is all about the geodesics. So that, that felt like very, uh, very, very, very close. So I started to crochet these models for teaching purely, but somehow they took life, like, you know, like you already mentioned about like these transformations, and they just started to grow by themselves. So this one grows, growed, uh, was growing so big that it got into the Guinness record book as the biggest hand crocheted hyperbolic plane. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, I, I didn't submit it. They, they really, they contacted me and said, is it really true that you have such a thing? Well, I guess so. Nobody has beaten me in there. Nobody has been that crazy. And Okay. Well, so these forms are growing. And uh, I was like, so they also transformed me because suddenly from some mathematician who is teaching geometry, I got an invitation to go to the art shows. And I said, me? Artist? No. I was told in a school that I can do anything but art, you know, like, so, and I said, okay, so that's how I was growing up, you know, like, and when I had to go to the art opening, I said, but that, that's, I'm not the artist, you know, and it's like, okay, well, now I, always oh, easier, so I haven't got used to that, I guess, that's a transformation. 
So, well, and then, you know, and then, the, of course, when I'm going to say, I can go with the teaching models to the art shows, and then it, like, encouraged me too, looked into these colors, and, and then just do various, do these various forms, and so, well, it's a... Uh, so Darcy Thompson said that the physicist and mathem uh, or mathematician can give us perfectly satisfying ex um, expression for the form of a wave or even of a heap of a sand, but never ask him to divine the form of any particular wave of the sea, not the actual form of any mountain peak or hill. So therefore, like, because these forms are changing, and neither are they, sometimes they change colors, and you have to recognize that actually these two forms are identical. These colors, uh, these colors are the same amount in both of them. So there are some creatures which does it. I was like very, um, so very much excited about learning nudibrachia. And I didn't know about that. Some biologists pointed, pointed to them to look at them and see that's the same form. And then it starts rolling around, and that's the same creature. So that gave an expression, like in mathematics, we are calling these forms manifolds. And so do these six forms. As originally, they are all the same. They are same looking like the ones I showed you before, except then we can, we can have these forms and they are so that they are they are morphing, yeah, and then uh, like doing them. So we can go even further and make like these knots and add something, and then which, which the shape among them is that's also a hyperbolic plane. So Darcy Thompson, uh, Darcy Thompson concluded his book saying that I am no skilled mathematician, I have had a little need to confess, but something of the use and beauty of mathematics, I think, I am able to understand. For the harmony of the world is made manifest in form and number, and the heart and soul and all the poetry of natural philosophy are embodied in the concept of mathematical beauty. Moreover, the perfection of mathematical beauty is such that whatsoever is most beautiful and regular is also found to be most useful and excellent. Twenty years ago, I crocheted my first little plane, and I never imagined how this concept will grow. And so there is a piece which is an example of this growth, because it was picked up, this idea, by many, many people in the world, and in different ways, and it continued differently. And the part of it, was sent to me by the women who were crocheting it in Sicily, in Palermo, and, uh, well, it's actually in many parts in, in, in Italy. And then I added my own things, and now, and now this piece is going back to Palermo, because on Monday we are flying to Palermo, and so and therefore I'm calling this one homage to form and growth. <laughs>